So we started with this production function, y equals to k to the power alpha, l to the power one minus alpha. Zero is less than alpha is less than one. And we reached till this production function in the intensive form, right? So we have done this much in the solo model up until now. Now we are moving on to the another equation of the solo model in which is the main equation, the capital accumulation equation. The capital accumulation equation. which is, let me write the equation first and then I'll explain. K dot is SY minus delta K. Now let's look at all of these terms separately. K dot is the instantaneous change in K. So what is instantaneous change in K? Let me just write first of all. instantaneous change in K. So instantaneous change in K could be written as like this. The capital in time period T plus one minus capital in time period T, right? That is the change in capital. And if I want to find out the growth rate in capital, growth rate in capital, then don't you think I have to find this out? Kt plus 1 minus Kt whole upon Kt. So Kt plus 1 minus Kt is just telling me the change in capital. But if I want to find out how the capital is growing over time, then I will also have to divide it by Kt. Right. This instantaneous change in capital is written as K dot, capital K dot, or more technically, this is the derivative of K with respect to time. This is the derivative of capital K with respect to time, D capital K by DT. Yeah. So this is just telling you, I mean, in time period, let's say, I'm just giving an example. So if the capital here, you have time and here you have capital. So this is just telling you a time period uh, T, this is the amount of the capital which you have. A time period T plus one, this is the amount of the capital which you have. So what is the change in capital? This is what DK by DT is telling. But for the growth rate in capital, you need to find out the the uh, division of this k dot with k. That's what I hope you know this. That is, you find out the growth rate in any variable. For example, uh, output in year 2021. Output in year 2021. You want to find out the growth rate in output. So what you do with respect to 2020 output? You do it this way only. Mm -hmm. Upon output 2020. You do it this way only. Yeah. Okay. So one thing is this that uh, this is the way we write the instantaneous change and the growth rate in capital then would be written as capital K dot by capital. One thing should be clear uh, at the outset. Capital K dot is instantaneous change in K. Capital K dot by capital K is the growth rate in K. Or you, or you say the proportional change in K. Or you say the proportional change in K. Okay. This capital K dot 
when i say that capital in time period uh, t plus 1 is kt capital kt plus 1 in time period t it was capital kt so the change in the capital stock is nothing but the net investment so this capital k dot is what you call as net investment net investment small sy so what you are doing is what you are saying here is this in the closed economy all amount is all whatever amount is saved that is invested right so investment is equal to uh, savings. So whether you write gross savings or you write gross investment, that means one of the same thing. One thing. Okay. What happens in the closed economy? Y is equal to C plus I plus G. This is what you get in the closed economy. So I can also write this as Y minus C minus okay. Y minus C minus G equals to I. I can write like this. So, beta, what is what is this? This is nothing but your savings, or you can call as savings or gross savings. What you have. So, from the total income, the amount which you have, uh, which you have taken out for consumption, means consumers have spent something, or the amount which government has spent. So, whatever is left out is what your savings are, and this is nothing but your gross investment. This is nothing but your gross investment. And this guy. Can I also do it this way? Y minus C minus T is nothing but private savings. I have done nothing. I have just added and subtracted T from here. And T minus G is nothing but public savings. Public savings are government savings. Let's think about it. What is the expenditure of the government? G. What is the income of the government? T. So from the income, if you spend, if you deduct the expenditure is what you get is the savings, savings of the government. right? So adding them together, private savings plus public savings, you add them together, what you get is the gross savings. These are equal to gross investment. So whether I write Gross in gross investment, or I write gross savings. That means one and the same thing, right? So these are savings. So let's say capital S are what my gross savings are. They are equal to some proportion of the total income. Some proportion of the total income. What is that say? What is that some proportion? Is what savings propensity or savings ratio, this is exogenously given. Exogenously given means given to you from outside. Savings propensity, exogenous. Also, this capital Y is nothing but what? You remember now? We have just done this in the last class. Total income is the total wage income plus total rental income. That's what WL plus RK. One thing. And these gross savings are nothing but equal to investment. Gross savings are nothing but equal to investment. Achha, why I'm writing it here? So this these are gross savings. And these gross savings are equal to gross investment, are equal to gross investment. Fair enough. Okay. Then some amount of uh, the capital which you have invested or some amount of capital uh, or the machines which you have used, they are subject to normal wear and tear. They are subject to normal wear and tear. So, this delta K is nothing but the replacement cost or the or the depreciation. 
what you have. Delta is the depreciation rate and delta K is the uh, total replacement cost. I'll tell you what exactly uh, this would be, right? So please write delta K is the total is the depreciation depreciation of capital stock that occurs during production. That occurs during production. Right. And delta is nothing but the depreciation rate. And this is also given to you from outside. So from gross, when you deduct depreciation, what you get is net. So from gross investment, when you deduct depreciation, what you get is net investment. Right. So this is what you have. K dot is sy minus delta k right k dot is sy minus delta k so if the gross investment is more than what is needed to keep the capital stock unchanged the uh, the total capital in the economy is going to make so what if what is it that i've said if i want to keep the capital stock unchanged it means k dot has to be equal to zero right at capital K dot equals to zero, capital stock is intact. Capital stock is intact. Capital stock is intact means capital is not changing. Capital is not changing. Why? Because whatever you are investing, that is equal to the replacement capital or replacement cost. So I have uh, invested, let's say, five machines. And if I want to keep my capital stock unchanged, I have to replace this capital by five machines. So there is no addition to uh, uh, what do you call uh, the capital stock in the economy. But supposedly, if the replacement cost is just five machines in the economy, so if you want to keep uh, the capital stock unchanged, you just need five more machines. So that is what my depreciation is. That is what my replacement cost is. But I have invested in the economy 10 machines. So the investment, the gross investment, the number of additions of the machines is more than the replacement of the machines. Then the capital stock in the economy is going to increase, right? If SY is greater than delta K, then delta K is greater than zero. If SY is less than delta K, then delta K is less than zero. Again, understand this looks very simple, but there is there is a point here. Supposedly, if you want to keep the capital stock unchanged. You need five machines, let us say, in your economy. But the gross investment in the period is just for two machines. So you have just invested two more machines. While in order to keep the capital stock unchanged, you need five machines. So the capital in the economy is going to fall. So their K dot is going to fall capital K dot is going to fall. I am very particular about using the words capital and small here because very soon we're going to convert this equation in the output per worker where we will be using small y, small k. So be very, very clear about all that. So SY is the gross investment, gross savings. So you're writing gross investment in terms of savings. You are saying the number of machines added in the economy. So how many number of machines added in the economy? Let's say 10. 
delta k is the number of machines which need to be added to the economy to keep the capital per capital unchanged uh, so let's say th that is five machines so if you are adding more machines then what is needed to be added to keep the capital unchanged then definitely capital k dot is going to increase if you are adding less machines then what is needed to keep capital unchanged then capital is going to fall then capital is going to fall right so abhi tak what is it that we have done we have just defined what the capital accumulation equation is and uh, we have talked about what is uh, this instantaneous change in k and what is the growth rate in capital so what you call as k down capital k dot that is the instantaneous change in k that is nothing but dk by dt and what you call as k dot by k is nothing but the growth rate in capital or the proportional change in capital so i'll be talking about the i'll be converting this capital accumulation equation in the capital per worker form and we'll call that as the key equation of solo model and we'll be doing that in the next class right thank you beta